Hey everybody, this is uh, Vet Talks. Let's pause for a minute. A brief look at a veterinary topic that I encountered this week at my hospital, True Care for Pets in Studio City, Los Angeles. <clears throat> Hopefully this, this will give you just a, a short glimpse on a specific topic that we see commonly with dogs and cats. So I wanna focus on a disease that we've been seeing very frequently in the hospital called brachycephalic airway syndrome because it's now summertime in Los Angeles, it's quite, gotten quite hot here. And so there are certain dog breeds, specifically brachycephalic dogs that are more prone now to having heat strokes because of a condition that they have with their upper airway. And so we're gonna talk about a condition known as brachycephalic airway syndrome. So if you break down that name, brachycephalic airway syndrome, the first word brachycephalic pertaining to those dogs that have the squished in faces. And we breed them that way because they're really cute. So any kind of bulldog, like French bulldog or American bulldog, English bulldogs, uh, pit bull terriers are in that category, Cavalier, King Charles Spaniels, any kind of Spaniel, Cocker Spaniels, these are dogs that have the, face, the facial features uh, that are known as brachycephalic. So they have kind of a shortened muzzle in comparison to uh, other dog breeds. And so with that comes some problems. When they're first born, they're born with these uh, nostrils, nares, that are stenotic. So they're smaller than normal. And over time, because the stenotic nares causes an increase in airway resistance, you end up with elongation of the soft palate. So the palate and the roof of your mouth becomes longer and longer. The palate normally protects the airway from accidentally inhale, inhaling food when they're eating. And so that becomes longer. And then over time, the air resistance continues to build as they're trying to breathe through these tiny nostrils. The palate becomes longer, causing more of an obstruction. And then you end up with everted saccules, which are these two laryngeal saccules, two little bubbles that are located in the back of the vocal cords of the, um, of the upper airway, the, the uh, voice box. And so those saccules, which normally should be sitting nice and flat, are everted. They come up and they cause an obstruction. And then all this together ends up causing a weakness in the entire cavity of the uh, laryngeal, the laryngeal space. So the larynx, which includes the vocal cords, of the voice box, the epiglottis, all the structures in the back of the throat there that, um, that are mandatory for protecting the airway from inhaling food and water, but also allowing air to pass through, becomes very, very weak over time and it collapses. So you get what's called laryngeal collapse as a secondary disorder to all this other stuff. And, um, and between that, plus the excitement of being outside, plus being on a hike in the middle of the summer, you end up with a dog that is now working harder to breathe and with, a, um, with already a baseline of, of increased resistance to the airway, and then the, they, their body temperature increases and gets to a point where it can be quite dangerous for them, then we see them in the emergency, uh, emergency hospital at True Care for Pets for heat stroke. So if you want to think about brachycephalic airway syndrome, you've got the brachycephalic part, which is all that that I just mentioned that associated with the breed and how they're born. Combine that with the airway, um, uh, so the upper airway specifically, and then the syndrome because it's made up of a multitude of diseases, some of which I already mentioned. Now there are other conditions associated with the disease that I did not mention that, they're, that they may or may not be born with. And so another common abnormality is hypoplastic trachea. So the windpipe that goes from the larynx down to the down to the lungs can become, they're born with a smaller than normal uh, trachea or windpipe. It's called the hypoplastic trachea. Some pets on top of that have what's called dorsal redundant tracheal tissue or, or dorsal redundant membrane where they'll have this increased thickening of the tissues that line the trachea and it gets uh, very thick, redundant, and that also decreases the, um, the luminal diameter of the windpipe as well. And that adds to all the resistance that we've already mentioned before, but this is all the lower airway now. So everything extending from the larynx uh, through the trachea into the lungs. They also are more prone to having abnormalities with, with the little hairs that are located in the smaller, um, uh, the smaller uh, portions of the lower airway, cilia. And so they, they have um, uh, cilia, little hairs, that are normally supposed to bring up mucus and debris, smaller particles, they don't work that well, or they're born with abnormal cilia, and so they have a problem with clearance of mucus and things like that. And then after all of this is occurring at the same time, the, they'll end up with collapse not only of the trachea, but also collapse of the bronchioles, the tinier, tinier airways that we just, we just mentioned that has little, little hairs in them. So all these things in, in uh, conjugation are, uh, develop, are, are contributory to the entire syndrome known as brachycephalic airway syndrome.
So the way you want to think about it as a, as a pet owner is sure, all that stuff sounds, sounds fancy and great, but what do, you, what do you do about it if your dog has brachycephalic airway syndrome? And so you might want to think about it in terms of what the, the doctor can fix and cannot fix. So if you want to lump all the diseases in this syndrome that the surgeon can fix, you're looking at the stenotic nares, so the small nostrils, you're looking at the elongated soft palate, so the roof of the mouth, that becomes long over time. Those are the two main things we're gonna look for. And then um, everted saccules, the little little uh, structures behind the vocal cords that end up getting swollen and causing an upper, air, upper airway obstruction. Those are the things that you can fix. Um, there are aspects then that you cannot fix. And those are the other diseases that I mentioned. So the laryngeal collapse, we can't fix that. If you're looking at the hypoplastic trachea or the redundant tracheal membrane, the redundant uh, tracheal tissue, you can't fix that. You can't really fix the, the tracheal collapse to a certain degree. It's, it's um, a kind of a gray zone there, and you can't really fix the uh, collapse in the lower airways, the bronchioles. You also can't fix the abnormal cilia that they have, that, the little hairs that line their, their lower airway. So um, there, are some, there are some procedures, though, that in the category of those diseases, diseases you cannot fix, you can do something about. So if you have laryngeal collapse, for example, you could either do a uh, laryngeal um, retinoid lateralization, and also known as a tieback surgery. So you actually go into the vocal cord and you pull one vocal cord permanently back. That's usually a procedure reserved for another type of disease called laryngeal paralysis, but in theory, it would open up the airway permanently, um, although it's kind of a salvage procedure. I wouldn't do that procedure in this breed of dog or this category of diseases in dogs unless I really had to. The other procedure you can consider to open up the airway for dogs that have really bad laryngeal collapse is you can do what's called a partial arytenoidectomy. So you actually remove a portion of the vocal cords or the associated structures to try and open up the airway further. Again, not really something that you want to do. I have done it though in those dogs that, uh, that, are, that have no other choice. They have such bad laryngeal collapse that you have to just open up the airway permanently. And of course, there are pros and cons to all these procedures. But, but in the simplest terms, you want to think of the syndrome as conditions that your surgeon can fix. So the, the stenotic nares, the everted saccules, elongated soft palate, and the conditions they can't fix, which is pretty much everything else in, the, uh, in all the diseases that make up brachycephalic airway syndrome. So the uh, complications of surgery and prognosis, all that is going to be case specific to your dog and discussion you need to have with your surgeon as far as what the pros and cons are of performing surgery like this. But in the meantime, what I want you to focus on is recognizing that this is a disease in dogs, especially brachycephalic breeds. It's also one that's going to be exacerbated when you're dealing with dogs that are in a situation that are excited or anxious or if they're in um, hot or humid weather. So you want to make sure that you have uh, that you actually pay attention to your dog's signs, any sign of breathing issues, you're clearly overdoing it. You want to make sure they're staying in cool, temperatured environments. You want to make sure you have plenty of water around. Avoid things like neck leads. Try to use a body harness instead when you're walking them outside. And try to avoid activities that just are not meant for these dogs. These dogs, although they have all the energy in the world and they want to please you and have a good time, you can try and reserve their activity for maybe things that are not so outdoorsy and don't require that much um, energy input on their end. Uh, so try and keep things uh, fun and exciting, but as safe as possible for these breeds. So uh, again, I hope this, uh, this brief ex explanation of brachycephalic airway syndrome helps you out. Leave any questions or comments below regarding, regarding this disease. And uh, this is Vet Talks. Let's pause for a minute. Dr. Shadi Rafidge of True Care for Pets at Studio City, Los Angeles. Take care.